Hi guys, it's me, Mr. Bertosh, your astonishingly and fabulously handsome science teacher. And in this video, we're going to be learning about sea breezes and land breezes and also monsoons. And if I feel like it, I'll probably mention valley breezes and mountain breezes as well. you are a much more fortunate child than me, then perhaps your parents loved you and they took you to the beach. Unlike my parents who did not love me enough to take me to the beach, but I'm kind of lying because we did go to the beach a few times and we didn't live anywhere close to the beach. So it's not like they could have taken me to the beach, but I still harbor resentment. Uh, and if you went to the beach, then you perhaps saw kites flying because it is a common beach activity to fly kites along the beach because there is a lot of wind there. There's right around the edge of the ocean where the continents and the oceans come together. There's about a 15, 20 mile little range there that gets a lot of wind, but especially, especialmente, right next to you know the water on the edge of the water right on the beach there's a lot of wind and we call that either a sea breeze or a land breeze in this video we're going to talk about what sea breezes and land breezes are what their causes are and we're also going to talk about a very closely related phenomenon called phenomena call now i want to sing the phenomena song phenomena do 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 oh sorry anyway uh, a very related uh, phenomena called monsoons. And I'll probably talk about valley and mountain breezes and what causes those too, since we're on that topic. So let's talk, let's start, let's start a rate, let's start an FI with sea breezes and land breezes. In another video, I talk about how when at uh, the land is heated when the ground is heated it heats the air above it and how that causes the air to expand like a hot air balloon when you heat up air a parcel of air a parcel is just a sciency word that means like a small packet of air when you heat up a parcel of air it rises because it's like a hot air balloon. It's expanded, it's less dense. In fact, in another video, another, another video, I talk about how things sort themselves out by density. So if you wanna understand really why the air parcel is rising, go watch that video. But in a nutshell, uh, when the air is heated, it rises and because it expands and that leaves a gap underneath it, right? And you can't have a place where there is no air. But let me back up first, okay? Because I'm getting ahead of myself a little bit. So along the coast, we have two areas. And you can envision this in your mind. There's side by side. There's the part where there is land. And there is the part where there is water. So you've got this massive ocean that's miles and miles of water. And this massive land mass, this continent, that's miles and miles of land. And right, yeah, and you have a border, you have a beach there. Okay? On one side, the characteristics are very different than on the other side. One of the biggest differences is how quickly the uh, temperature changes during when that material, that substance is, is uh hit or affected by the sun. In another video, another, another, another video, I talk about specific heat capacity. Don't you love that I'm making you watch all these videos just to understand this one? What kind of a jerk am I? 
I should just like say everything in one video, but then the video would be too long. So there, you have to go watch the other videos, the other, other, other videos. In another video, I talk about specific heat capacity, which is just basically this idea that the ground heats up much more quickly than the water. So I have side by side, two different substances, rock and water. And the rock heats up in the day very quickly. As soon as the sun starts shining down on the rock, it starts heating up. And on, on the other side of that line, there's the water. And it has a very high specific heat capacity, so it takes a long time to heat up. And the water mostly just stays cool all day. So the air above the land gets nice and warm. And the air above the water stays cold. Nice and cool. Uh, so then back to where I was a minute ago. As the air above the land heats up, it expands. And as it expands, it becomes less dense. Things that are less dense rise. So it that parcel of air expands and it rises up into the higher atmosphere. And that leaves a gap underneath where there's no air. And we all gasp for breath and we die. But not really. Because what actually happens is the air, the cooler air over the ocean, rushes in to fill it, to fill the gap. And that creates a breeze from the ocean towards the land in the day. And we call that a sea breeze. And the reason, which is also a type of car, or at least it was once a type of car. The reason we call it a sea breeze is because wind is named from where it comes from. Always and forever. We name winds where they come from. And so if the wind is coming from the sea towards the land, then we shall call it a sea breeze. We shall indeed. So the sea breeze blows in from the sea to fill the gap under the air parcel that rose. But what happens to that air, that air that came in off the sea? Now it's over the land. Poor air because it's going to have, suffer the same fate. It's going to get heated by the land, and it's going to expand, and it's going to rise. And we get another air parcel rising. It's like you can imagine little air parcels, like stacks of air par parcels that are rising. So that one rises, and another more wind blows over to fill the gap. And it, and it heats up and expands and rises and more. And so all day long, I get these uh, parcels of air being heated over land because the land is hot, raising up, rising up, rising, 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 it rising, rates up and into the upper atmosphere. And eventually, as it rises, as it raises, as it goes up, it cools down. And as it cools, it goes back out over the ocean. And then it slowly falls down, and then eventually it goes back over land. So it, starts, it creates this circle. Okay, uh, all day long, the air close to the surface is blowing from the sea towards the land, so we call it a sea breeze, and then it's rising up, and then way up high in the atmosphere, it's going back out to sea and falling back down. The opposite thing happens at night. Because at night, well, the ground cools off super de duper fast. As soon as the sun goes down, all the rocks and the dirt and the buildings and everything, they cool down really, really fast. I mean, within a matter of minutes. You think about how fast a hot slide outside in a playground stays hot once the sun goes down. It's just a matter of minutes, really and it's not hot anymore. So as the ground cools down in a matter of minutes, then now it's, but see the water doesn't cool down very fast. The water mostly stays the same temperature. So now the ground is colder and the ocean, the sea is warmer. So the pattern reverses. Now the water or rather the air over the ocean expands 
and rises, and air from the land blows out to the sea. And we call that a land breeze because, again, breezes are named, uh, wind is named from whence it comes. It's coming, it's whence, whenceulating, it's wincing. It's coming, the whence from whence it is coming is the land, the where from whence it is coming. I don't know. I don't speak old English, so I'm just trying to sound fancy. But it, the whence from whence it whences is the land, and so we call it a land breeze. Now, let's talk about monsoons. Monsoons are something that are closely related to land breezes and sea breezes, except that they are on a far larger, a much greater scale. A monsoon occurs across hundreds, if not thousands of miles. They're massive and they are, they have similar causes to sea breezes and land breezes. There are monsoons on several of the continents, including North America. North America has a monsoon in the Western United States, but the place on earth that has the most notable monsoon is Asia. So let's talk about Asia because that's where it's really very uh, pronounced. In, on Asia, in the summertime, what happens to the continent of Asia? The sun is shining down on it, shining down on me. Wait, what? Anyway, the sun is shining down on the continent of Asia, and so it gets heated. And in general, yes, it fluctuates from day to night, but in general, overall, it is hotter than the ocean. And the ocean, the uh, thousands of miles of the Pacific Ocean, are all colder, cooler than the land. So because the continent of Asia is uh, warmer in the summer, the air parcels over the land, the continent, they get heated up. And when they get heated up, what do they do? Remember? They expand, they become less dense. Things that are less dense rise like a hot air balloon. A parcel of air lifts up over the entire continent and that leaves a gap, a, gap, a space. And so all of the people who live in Asia, they choke to death with lack of air, but not really because that doesn't make any sense because you're not going to have an empty space in an atmosphere. So the air over the ocean, hundreds of miles of ocean, blows in across the continent to fill the gap across the entire continent. A sea breeze covers just a few miles. We're talking 10, 15 miles, okay? And a monsoon, on the other hand, is uh, something that occurs across hundreds or even thousands of miles. Likewise, a sea breeze and land breeze, that is a cycle that occurs daily because of differences in temperature over day between day and night, whereas a monsoon occurs over many months due to the difference between winter, summer and winter temperatures. Well, if the water coming in across Asia, if the air, I should say, coming in across Asia was sitting over the ocean, what probably happened to it while it was there? While it was, that air parcel was over the ocean, probably a lot of water evaporated and probably a lot of water filled that air parcel up like a sponge, just absorbed and absorbed and absorbed water, becoming very humid. As that air parcel that's been over the ocean moves in across Asia, what happens to it? Okay, it gets heated up by the land that causes it to rise. And as it rises, it's like squishing it like a sponge, like you're squishing the sponge as it rises and just buckets and buckets and buckets of water fall down and totally drench the land. In fact, you can create entire lakes and swamps and things that didn't exist during the dry season. So 
during the summer, you get a wet season where there are monsoons because the air is coming in off the ocean. Well, the air over the land heats up, it rises, it heats up, the land heats it up, the hot land heats it up, it expands and rises like a hot air balloon. And the air parcel off the ocean that's saturated with water comes in to take its place. It gets heated up and starts to rise and it gets squished like a sponge and huge amounts of water fall down, creating a wet season. And then you can probably predict what I'm going to say now. The opposite thing happens in the winter. In the winter, the land gets colder, much colder, and the oceans are warmer. And so this whole cycle reverses. And now the air over the ocean is warmer. And so it expands and it raises up. And the air over the land, over the continent of Asia, th hundreds or thousands of miles of, of air, this big air parcel, moves offshore out to the ocean. And it's dry because there's not a lot of water on the land really to evaporate. So it's dry. And so you get a dry season. So wherever you have monsoons, you get a wet season and a dry season. Now, at the beginning of this video, I suggested that I might talk about um, valley and mountain breezes. You can already figure these out. You're a smartly enough uh, half-sized human because you are a child and children are half the size of adults. You unfortunate half-sized humans. Um, but don't worry, you will grow up someday. And now I got totally off track. Anyway, a valley breeze is when the top of the mountain is hotter and the valley is cold, cooler. And so the winds blow from the valley, because winds are named where they come from, from the valley up the mountain, up towards the hotter top of the mountain. And the opposite thing uh, would be a mountain breeze. When the mountain is, the top of the mountain is cooler and the valley is hotter, then you get a breeze that goes down. I used to live in Salt Lake Valley and there were a lot of canyons, uh, like, for example, the Little Cottonwood Canyon. And there were trees at the bottom of these canyons that were bent. They grew, they grew bent. The reason they were bent was because of uh, mountain breezes coming down the mountain because it's usually cooler on the top of the mountains, right? And it's warmer down in the valley. So generally speaking, you would get a mountain breeze. It would come down the mountain and into the valley. A constant, it's a great place to fly a kite, just like along the beach because of sea and land breezes, uh, sea breezes in the day. Likewise, in the mouth of a canyon or close to a mountain, great place to fly a kite because you're going to get a lot of regular wind, uh, as evidenced by the bent trees that you will commonly see at the opening of canyons because of the wind that's there. So those are land breezes. Nope, those are those are mountain breezes and valley breezes. But we also talked about land breezes, sea breezes, and monsoons. Hi guys, thanks for watching my video. These rambling science videos where I go unscripted and just kind of barf up all the science knowledge out of my head are part of a series that go along with an online class that I teach, which you can sign up for if you go to handsomescienceteacher.com. I also have a whole bunch of free resources for homeschoolers. I have uh, hundreds of articles on every topic that uh, covers your entire science curriculum from fifth through eighth grade. I have online games and quizzes, all curated and written by uh, this handsome guy, uh, a science teacher with, well, three, three degrees, but two of them are in science. So it's uh, targeted right to and directly to your uh, your science student. So sign up, subscribe to the channel, and I release lots of videos. Also, in addition to these ones, lots of little uh, short videos that are like two minutes long that cover science topics 
those ones you don't get to see my handsome face but they're still good videos and they're much more targeted and those ones are scripted so you don't have to hear me like you are right now going blah 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 the end uh subscribe thank you goodbye